What's going on, my little chickens? Uh, quick, 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 man. Three minutes, maybe four at the most. You guys bear with me. I'm on this kick with Jesus not being God. You know, my gears are turning. My gears are turning. And again, guys, I do consider this to be one of Satan's largest deceptions out there because he knows that Jesus Christ is the key. Okay? He has to corrupt and distort and then throw a virus into that as much as he can. Okay? And he's done it. Okay, he's done it. He has done it. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna, I want to kick in on this. I want I want to ask you guys something. What is God's mo? You know, the Most High God. What is his mo? How does he operate? In case you haven't noticed, when you read about him, at one time the earth was so wicked. Okay, he was just gonna flood it. He wasn't gonna come down and save the world and save mankind, dude. He's like, you know what? I get I made man. I gave I spent all this time and created all this food and all these animals and all these flowers and all these trees. Man, I went to town, dude. I did everything, okay? And for those of you who can look at creation, I mean, dude, God did a lot of work in a very little amount of time. That's how dude, I mean, okay? So anyway, days of Noah was God going to come down and save everybody? Absolutely not. Absolutely not, man. He was going to flood it. Okay, he's on his throne. He's up there in heaven. He ain't coming down. You know, he was going to flood it. Okay, he found Noah. He said, you know what, man, I'm going to give this ship. I'm, excuse my language. I'm going to give this stuff one more chance. Okay. And so he did. In comes Noah. And how did that work out? Well, here we are today. Same thing. Just like the days of Noah, right? Same thing. Man just goes right back to his nasty, wicked ways. I mean, it just it never changes. So if you read Revelations, God has a plan to stop it once and for all, which is what he sent Jesus to do. Let's look at Sodom and Gomorrah. What did God do there? Okay, couldn't find one righteous person in Sodom and Gomorrah. So did God come down to save everybody? No, he didn't. Sat on his throne. He said, man, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to burn it. Everybody's burning. Everybody's going to be destroyed. They're wicked as hell. I'm just going to wipe them out. And that's what he did. So anyway, guys, that's God's MO. That's how he operates. God is not going to come down and hang on some cross and let Satan test him and then hang on some cross and let some Roman soldier beat him to death, you know, for mankind. That's not how God operates, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. God ain't doing that. Oh, hell no. Excuse my language again. He's not going to do that. He never would. He's already shown you what he's going to do. You know, it's in Revelations, man. He's going to throw his wrath out. He's going to destroy everything. Hail, fire, brimstone, earthquakes. Dude, then he's going to do the same thing, dude, that he did with Noah. That's what's coming. Anyway, Jesus, let's get on to that real quick. Uh, Jesus is a two-part thing. Okay, once upon a time, God gave Satan all this power and, and dominion and everything, and Satan came up with this brilliant plan to overthrow God, which proves how stupid he is because God has the most sophisticated security system that has ever been known. I'm sure he was think he knew exactly what Satan was thinking the whole time, just sitting there waiting for it. You know, he already knew. You know, that's how stupid Satan is. So anyway. God, to get revenge on Satan, he, you know, he told Satan, not only am I going to send your butt to hell, he goes, I'm going to elevate my son higher than you ever were. Okay, this pisses Satan off. But this is God's revenge on Satan. I'll show you, buddy. This is what's going to, it's what we're going to do. But Jesus had free will, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, God gave that plan to Jesus and said, okay, here's the deal. We're going to, we're going to end all this once and for all. I need you to go down there. And the remaining people on the earth that want to listen to you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you open a door for me. But there's this: you got to do it in a certain way. You're gonna have to hang on this cross. You got to be tested by Satan. You got to prove your loyalty. You got to go through all these trials, tribulations. Okay. So what's your, what your main purpose, Jesus, is to open that door so that people can go through. And again, Jesus is not gonna carry you. I know a lot of people, well, you know, Jesus died on the cross. He paid the price. Everything's done. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. He died on the cross and paid the price. But you, you, my friend, you're the one that has to make the choice to, you know, stay, stay in line 
walk with God, follow the rules, and get on through that narrow door. Right? Right. Uh, so Jesus, okay, he did that part, and he also was tested by Satan. And again, the point I always like to make, guys, is that, you know, hey, dude, God cannot be tempted by evil. Surely, if God is not going to come down and let Satan offer him a grain of sand. So anyway, I've made this comparison before, guys. Satan offering God the world would be like going on the beach and picking up one grain of sand and, and putting it in his hand, showing God, here, God, I'll give you this in exchange for the whole beach. And if you take that offer, that means you also have to bow down and worship me, which means you're going to give all your power to me. Okay, God, I'm offering you one grain of sand. I know you own the whole beach as far as the eye can see. Trillions and trillions of grains. Okay, you own it all. But I'm going to give you one grain. And in exchange, you got to bow down and worship me. And therefore, I'll be in control. Okay, so how many of you can, because that's exactly what it is if Jesus was God. That's what Satan would off, would have been offering him. Okay, that's how ridiculous it is. Satan told Jesus, jump off the cliff, and he, God, will send his angels to catch you. So if, if Satan said that to Jesus, not only that, Satan directly looked at Jesus and said, if you are the Son of God. Okay, Satan did not say, he didn't refer to Jesus as God. He said, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself over and God will send his angels to catch you. At which point, Jesus didn't say, look, Satan, I'm God. And do not tempt me, you know. He said, you do not tempt the Lord your God. Okay, you know, and, and. so it's all in your face, guys. So anyway, it's a two-part thing. Jesus came down, you know, to hang on that cross and open the door for whoever wants to go through so God can clean up this mess once and for all. And he also had to prove that he was worthy to sit on the throne next to God to get his inheritance, to get his reward and to rule his own kingdom and whatever the Bible tells you that was going to be his reward. You know, did Jesus have free will? Yeah, he could have taken Satan's offer. You know, I don't think he would have been that stupid, but, you know, he could have done it if he wanted. Anyway, man, all right, that's the explanation. That's another, my gears were turning. I just want to, you know, explain that to a few people, whoever's out there and they can't still quite understand it. Uh, anyway. All right. Peace out. Take care, guys. Have a great day.